All right, let's get started. So what I'm gonna go through today is a brief tutorial on how to do a watercolor painting of Venice. So you can see I've already started a bit on the sketch there. Um, it's based on this picture that I took when I was in Italy last year. So you can see pretty much, um, you know, it's mainly the, the silhouette, silhouette of the buildings. Um, the sun's behind these buildings, so they stand out pretty well. Um, it's good contrast against the sky. And I find that tends to be um, lend quite well to, to watercolour. So what I'm going to do is also just explain some of the materials that I'm using. So the paper here is Saunders Waterford 300 GSM. So I've kind of tried all different kinds of papers when I started painting and I find this one works the best for me. But it really, really depends. Um, some people prefer arches, and um, you can really start out with a lot of different other papers as well. Um, so it's not a huge. It's it's probably best to get the the um, you, you know the the best quality paper you can afford. Um, but yeah, if you just start if you're just starting out, it's not it's um, you, you know there's definitely a lot of choice out there. So. Just try to aim to get a, a kind of cotton, 100% cotton paper, and that should work out fine for you. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm just sort of drawing in very, very roughly the details um, of these buildings. Now. They don't have to be 100% perfect, um, especially because this is a this is a bit of a, a sketch. In fact, I'm probably going kind of dark here. But um, what you want to do is make sure you've got a, enough of a guideline so when you start painting, um, you, you you generally know where the main shapes are. Okay. Um, Some of the other materials I've got, so I've got four brushes, um, two larger brushes here, so this is a calligra calligraphy brush, the one on the left, and this one here is a watercolour mop brush, um, this is a synthetic brush, the other one is made of natural hair. I use those to paint the larger bits of paper, um, larger spaces, also got a couple of smaller brushes, I've got a thinner sable brush. Um, here and I've got a synthetic. Um, what is it? It's a, I'm not sure what kind of brush. It's a number eight. So probably only use two of those brushes, three maybe, uh, for this painting. Um, but I'm just going to try to get this sketch. Try to get this sketch done, so we can. Uh, can start so I don't want to sp really don't want to spend too much time on this um, in fact the lighter marks probably lend itself better um, get in some of these little windows here uh, you know you, you notice don't know if you guys can see but I, I, you notice that a lot of the window there are a lot of windows on these buildings and you don't need to draw them in don't need to draw them all in just a few of them will be, will be fine and later when you paint you can actually refer back to the images um, and, and 
at the end of the day, you're not going to paint them all the little bits and pieces anyway. Um, so I'm nearly done with this bit here. Just going to sketch in this last part. I've done this scene quite a few times. Um, you know, the more you, the more you uh, practice the same scene, the, the the better you tend to get at it. Um, with that said, it's been a while since I've I've actually properly painted. Um, in a lot of ways, this video and you know, assuming I, I do some more, is, is a way to help motivate me as well to to get back into get back into things um, and hopefully if anyone's if anyone's watching this help you to pick up a few things or, or two about watercolor painting um, so some of these buildings you can see are separated uh, so I'm just gonna really indicate really indicate that in the picture it's not obvious um, what's going on what's going on here you can see bits of uh, aerials and um, air conditioning ducts and stuff like that I don't know what they are chimneys got coming off the roof so just indicate basically just indicate them um, and uh, have make sure this horizon line as well is uh, pretty pretty obvious so we guess where the where the water ends and the and where it meets the building um, doesn't have to be have to be perfect so um, there's a boat over here so I think I'll just draw it in like this uh, uh, so that's a boat Um, and then over this side we've got a larger sort of um, ferry so this one kind of cuts into the building a little bit um, what I might do I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put another pretty simple pretty simple boat here as well uh, I don't want to spend too much time Kind of drawing that other one in, and for this, for the purposes of this of this video, I want to make it pretty, pretty, um, pretty simple as well. So that's another that's another little boat. You know, you can put another one in here as well. Um, yeah, I think that should I think that should do for a, for the base picture. All right. So also important to have is a bit of a bit of towel or I guess a, a it could be a cloth, a bit, a bit of tissue to dab your paintbrush. So um, that's just to control the how much how much water that you have on the brush um, for certain techniques, which I'll go through what I'm doing as I'm painting. Okay. So I'm thinking probably for the sky, I'm going to start off with a bit of a, um, a bit of a bluish, bluish gray at the top. So we'll make it almost like it's, um, the sun's, you know, the sun's just set or just, just kind of, kind of setting. So, um, bring up the, make sure that it's in the camera. Got the water bottle up the top here. But you should be able to see the entire palette. I'll move it later if I need to. Um, 
Okay. So, what I'm going to do is just get a bit of this blue. This is cerulean blue. Um, the paints, paints are a, a combination of um, Daniel Smith paints and also some Mugello, Mugello paints um, that I got as a as a, as a present um, some time ago, a few a few many years ago actually. And you'd be surprised how long they actually last when you buy them in the in the tube. What I do is that I just squeeze the the, the paints out of the tube into the palette. Um, that way you don't waste, um, basically don't waste any, any, any paint. And they also store quite well. Um, so I've got a, almost like a watery, very watery consistency. Um, of ultramarine up the top. It's mixed around with some other some other punk uh, paints, right? I know it's an ultramarine as well. This is this is uh, cerulean. Okay, and I'm gonna just add in a little bit of this red, a tiny bit of red. Um, what else are we gonna put in? A bit of yellow. This is yellow ochre, so yellow ochre, cerulean blue, and a bit of red. All right, I've got the paper on a slight slant, so you can see I've just basically wedged um, something behind the, the paper here. So what will happen when you start painting, the paint will just naturally go downwards and um, helps with some effects and uh, make sure, obviously make sure that it doesn't pull in areas as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start from the top. Um, so for this painting I'm going to try to make it darker at the top and uh, as you get further down um, go lighter. Okay, so I've got pretty much uh, covering a lot. You can see with the larger brushes, um, and I can switch to this one as well, which has a finer tip. With the larger brushes, you can cover more area, um, and not have to fiddle around too much. Um, so around here, I would say, okay, I'll add a bit more. While it's still wet, you can add in uh, little bits and pieces up the top. Um, or just wherever it's wherever it's wet and it bleeds in. But once it's dried, uh, you can't do that anymore without it um, causing some interesting cauliflower effects. So what we'll do is I'm gonna just get some of this red. I'm gonna find a bit of area of my palette where I don't have other gunk mixed in. Maybe there. It's a bit of red and a little bit of this yellowy orange here. Um, so let's see how that looks. Okay. Looks all right. Um, so I'm just gonna go and pop that in like that. As I get further down, I want to try to use a bit more of this orange. Okay. Maybe a bit of the, bit of the yellow further down. Um, Now most of my paintings I tend to just do in layers in watercolour, so you'll notice that I'm going over these buildings um, in pretty much the same colour as the sky. Um, it doesn't matter because you'll be going over them um, again later on 
in a darker color. So just cover that pretty much. Okay. And um, let that let that sort of I tend to try to lift off little bits of paint here and there as well. This will create the impression of um, some clouds. So you can see I'm just drawing the brush on um, on this cloth and just using that to lift out. There, there's other ways you can do it as well. Um, you know, you can add a bit of um, water later on when it's starting to dry. Um, you can use a tissue as well to a dry tissue to lift out bits of paint so I'm just going to leave it like that for the time being um, and uh, I'll just quickly paint over this side I probably went a bit dark there but that's all right um, you can also like I said before add in a bit of color while the areas are still wet to influence how it turns out. Um, I always find it's it's nice to let the colors mix a bit on, on the paper. Um, they just turn out looking looking a bit more interesting that way rather than if you pre-mix everything. So with this one you want to make the sky. Um, for me I try to imitate um, the sky a little bit so reflect the, the, um, the sunlight onto the onto the um, water area so I'm gonna get a bit of that same trying to make up that same color that I did before so basically that orangey orangey red and it um, doesn't have to be have to be exact but that's about what you want and um, Let's just get this bit here. This bit's almost dry. Oh, sorry. I thought it dried a, a little bit. It, you want to make sure that it, for, uh, I guess for this particular style um, of, of painting, you want to try to make sure that the whole the whole layer is done it in, in one go. So the moment things start to dry and you get a hard edge there, um, it's very hard to, to continue the that sort of flow down the page if it sort of cuts off so you in a way you want to get it done as quick as possible okay so just get a bit more of that of that orange color and just add that in here I felt like I didn't let it go down a little bit more okay all right so as we're getting down to the bottom area of the page, this is where you want to add in um, some of the darker colors. Uh, so basically just the blue, uh, bluish green for the water. Um, so because we've already got some of the yellow and the orange there, um, if you add in, if you add in the blue, you see that it mixes and it makes that color anyway. Um, don't want to go see how I'm sort of just feathering it where it gets further up. So you, you don't want to don't want to go too high up. Um, otherwise, you ruin that that sort of reflect that reflection effect. Oops. So as you go further down the page, you want to also make it darker. So that's a bit of um, ultramarine. So I'm just going to add that in here at the bottom. And also blend that together a little bit with the, the middle green layer. So let's keep on going. I'm going to add also a little bit of orange in there. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, here, um, and I want to also go a bit darker. Um, I think 
this is a purple. Oops, that's all right. Um, so we'll get that last bit in. Just trying to get that done quickly. Uh, here we go. All in one go. Out of the way. Okay. Mm. Accidentally got a bit of paint there, but that's all right. Another bit of gouache, I think that is. Um, So now that I've got most of the, the water in, while it's still wet, you can do some pretty interesting uh, wave effects. So I'm mixing up some darker blue and purple paint here on the side. Um, quite thick, but um, maybe 50% paint, 50% water. Um, and I want to dry the brush as well just a bit and what I can do is go through and add little as you can see just little waves further down the page you're look, obviously you're making the these little ripples larger and as you go up you want to make them smaller and and, and lighter as well um, and this is going to create a the illusion of um, depth so I don't want to overdo it, I'm just going to add in a few up here, and, uh, and if you do this quick enough, um, the good thing is that the, you know, the, the paper is still wet, and uh, these little waves will blend in quite nicely, and yeah, make them all the same as well, so let's add some some funny ones here and there and some, some of these sort of shapes um, don't want to overdo it because I want to keep that um, orangey reflection, that orangey light there um, and I'll just go over the bottom a little bit You can only do this once. Once it's um, once it's dry, that's it. So maybe add a few more uh, darker bits at the bottom here. Darker waves. One there. One there. One there. Here. some kind of grey, dark blue slash grey paint at the bottom. And I'm trying not to overdo this as well. You, you kind of, you got to know when to stop. Um, with watercolour, it's very easy to overwork things and uh, for all the colours to start turning out um, looking, looking muddy. So I'm going to leave that for now. Um, the top's already started to dry um, you can touch the paper so that's that's pretty that's kind of damp um, where these buildings are uh, these ones still slightly wet uh, times like these I often pull out the 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 hairdryer to, to speed things up um, to get it to dry dry faster but I'm going to give it a go, maybe starting from this end, I think, maybe just, um, oh, I don't even have my hair dryer, let me have a look, no, it's not plugged in, okay.
fiddling around with it in the background. Uh, okay. So I'm just gonna very lightly dry this area where the buildings are. So I want the buildings to have a sharp contrast with the sky and if it's all wet you'll find that if you don't wait enough time for it to dry you'll go in and then it will just bleed into the sky and then it'll look like you've you've, you've lost the effect of those um, of those buildings and the, and the architecture so uh, I've just made sure I've got that to a dry enough level um, the reason I'm not completely drying is sometimes I, I like the the, the effect of it of just this uh, slightly soft edges on, on the building so um, here's the, the reference image again um, and you can see with the colors they're quite different from the reference picture you can decide really what time of the day or what kind of mood you want to present in in the painting um, and I like to experiment with different colors as well so it's not not always just about um, trying to make it look exactly like the like the reference picture so what am I doing so I want to get some blue and uh, what a color of these buildings so that they're, they're kind of uh, because because the the Sun's in the background the buildings are quite dark um, so we can almost paint them a similar color um, and then maybe add a few other highlights here and there. So I'm just going to mix up a grey. Um, so the grey is just a blue, red and a yellow. Uh, so that looks okay. Let me just make it a little bit thicker. Should do it. Okay. Um, and what I'll do... start going in so let's have a let's have a test um, I've also got some some trees or, or bushes down the side there so let's see if I get in a bit of green do I have a green here we go so just start very very quickly adding in trees and um, you notice I'm cutting around this little boat there as well which we will do later on okay so I'm just getting through this bit quite quickly um, there and as we hit these buildings, I'm just going to go and add them in in grey. Okay. And again, cutting around um, the boat. Uh, very important to get some of these defining uh, architectural details correct. They don't have to be perfect especially if you're just doing a, a sketch but um, especially especially domes like this one um, you want to make sure that they're more or less um, identifiable so I'm gonna actually make this make a thicker paint I've gone too light with the tops um, let me just dry that off a bit
so like I said before with these uh, quick paintings you don't have to get them perfect but you can see there that there is a but you can see the dome um, now I'm just gonna go across like that get this other dome in as well okay and with this central one I really want to get this top bit of the dome to look like it should Leave, you can also leave, see, bits of white um, in between certain areas. You don't have to colour the whole thing in. Um, just add some variety. And I'm going to do this. This is a bit of a statue there on the side. I think I've overdone that a bit, but um, that's all right. So moving across and also making sure that I go down to the um, water line at the bottom and uh, just quickly do this make sure that's straight as well uh, continuing along here Needs to be darker. Bit of yellow. Okay. Okay. There we go. Continuing now to the other side, and again, remember just to cut around these boats here. Um, these buildings are actually a, a bit lighter, so I'm going to use um, a bit more of this. I don't know if I've mixed green here. I'm just gonna use this lighter, lighter kind of um, grey that I've mixed up. Don't know what I've mixed up here. I think the most important thing is is to make sure you're getting the consistency correct in the paint. So whether it's um, you know lighter or darker, essentially. Um, is, is more important um, in my opinion than the actual color uh, that you that you end up mixing so here I am I'm just doing the rest of these paintings uh, sorry the rest of these um, buildings and uh, here we you know you got the tops of the buildings here just you know you can just add bits and pieces um, oh, I forgot to do this little Cell, little mast. Another, there's another one here, um, and then these buildings have a slight okay. And uh, so, as you, yeah, you can still add bits of color in um, and influence how it looks while it's still wet. So, um you know, I'm just going to indicate down here some of the the uh, darker bits of the building. Oops. 
Actually, I'll probably, I'll probably leave that for the time being. It's it hasn't dried well enough yet. Let me just finish off this bit here. And I've probably been a bit too fiddly throughout this whole process. Um, normally, normally it wouldn't take me as long to to do a section like this, but. I'm being extra careful since I'm recording it. Um, so you've pretty much now got um, all the buildings in. So I'm just going to look here. I think this I haven't got it completely straight down the middle. So I'm going to just fix that up a bit. Alright, so I'm probably just gonna leave those buildings leave these buildings for now and move on to the water. Now I wanna add some sharp looking waves um, and then add some smaller sharper waves up the top. So I'll show you what I mean by that, and that's just gonna add a bit of variation to the softer waves that I've already painted in earlier while the paint um, while the paper was still wet so some people do them one way or um, or the other you can use both um, methods at the same time it just depends what you what what you prefer basically so what I'm doing is just mixing a bluish blue gray okay. down the bottom so just, here we go so that's I don't know that's probably not dark enough a bit more blue okay that's about it so just basically I'm just gonna use this kind of motion here As you move up the page, you are just making these waves a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, you can change brushes. I'm probably just going to continue using this this same one. It needs to be a bit darker down the bottom with these other waves here. So I'm just gonna go over it one more time. And again, you, you kind of got to know when to stop as well, um, which is easier said than done. Um, that kind of looks alright to me now, so I'm going to stop. You can also use a smaller brush, like this one, and 
can go through the top regions of the water makes it easier uh, I'm just going to make sure you get a the right consistency as well so just little smaller waves yeah and while we're at it as well we're just going to paint in the boats so oops see so I've done that a bit too dark um, doesn't matter we can pot it out but yeah I guess always remember with the things further in the distance generally they, they tend to be lighter especially um, in this painting with the waves so to create that sense of depth um, the illusion of depth you you have to have to make the the, the waves a um, bit more lighter as you go further up the page so a bit more just adding bit more paint down here I'm already getting a bit too much now so okay I'm gonna stop um, so with these boats I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go in and make them a, a very a light blue and um, Of them here as well, but I'll leave it. Hopefully, just trying to leave a bit of um, a bit of that light at the top of the boat as well. Um, and you can see this one's kind of bled into the building a bit, um, which is no problem. So, oh, that one's done. Uh, now I'll just go over and do, there's a small one here, that's all you need to do, there's one here, and this last one here. kind of gone into the building again but that's no big deal okay um, one thing to remember as well with these boats that are on the water to to get them to um, look like they're actually on the water you need to make the bottom of them a little bit darker so I'm gonna let that let that dry slightly. Um, I'll go back to it later. The sky's now gotten pretty pretty dry. Um, the buildings aren't. Um, I'm just going to wait for these buildings to dry so I can add some finer architectural details like the windows, some of the separators between the buildings um, and also the boats. While that's happening I'll just show you how I do the um, how I just add in some some birds so just got a bit of this gray that I've mixed up already um, so I'm just gonna round the tops here you can see I've actually I don't know if you can see but I've accidentally splattered a bit of paint here and here just little dots so I'm gonna use that as um, just an indicator for a, for, for a bird so little little V sort of shape sometimes if you just add little dots um, as well that works um, And as you get further up the page, you can make them a little bit bigger, but um, it doesn't matter. Add them. Try to make them as as um, as random as, as possible. You don't want 
too many in one particular um, one particular area. But I, I find this adds just a bit of bit of interest. Um, see, it's very easy to overdo it as well. Um, I think that's that looks all right. I might just around the the domes. I, I like to add a few a few more birds around there, around the horizon line as well. Okay. All right. So I won't overdo it. And that's looking okay. Um, so these boats, so we'll get back to these boats very quickly now. Um, we want to make the bottom of them, like I said, uh, a little bit darker. So I'm adding this bluish paint there. And um, that should bleed into the, to the, to the uh, lighter areas of the boat up the top. But more importantly, it's going to anchor it. Okay, so that, that's what it should should look like. I'm going to do this little one here as well. here. It should have gone darker. A little bit darker here. Okay. Here we go. And you can also add them to the tops as well. Like there. stand out a bit more okay. and that one's lost a bit of detail in the corner but that's fine all right so I'm almost done with this quick painting what I'm gonna do now is add some of that architectural, some of those architectural details um, to these buildings. So for that I'm just going to quickly just very, um, oops, very um, quickly refer to the to the, ref, to the reference picture. Um, and getting the consistency of paints are important as well, so you, you want to use a uh, you want to make sure the paint's pretty thick, so you, as in you're not using much water in the paint. So something like that. Dry off the brush. So we're going to use some dry brush techniques here. Um, now the paper is still a little bit damp, so there'll be bits of bleeding here and there, but that's okay. Uh, dry brush is essentially, if, if you're not sure, it's um, you know as the name implies, it's just um, using predominantly just pigment on the on the brush and just dragging across the paper to indicate some architectural details so that's that's too wet it's um shouldn't do that uh, let me just do more like that I'm going to make there's a door here there's a door there uh, this bit's a bit darker. Don't have to kind of make everything out, but just some. Oops, just some details here. I probably feel like I've kind of stuffed it now, but uh, it's little little windows here. here, here. Up there. And I think 
There's some larger ones here. and stuff. I'm just going to try to remove some of this paint here actually because I shouldn't have mucked around with this area of the dome too much. Um, I'm just lifting off a bit of that paint like that. some of these details again it's really not really not too necessary um, but that's it so that's your really just a quick sketch um, how long was that not sure how long this video was, um, but that's it. Thanks for watching.